So the most obvious question is, why did Anderson Lee Aldrich shoot 30 people? And the truth is, we don't know. We do know he was clearly a troubled person. You just heard Tucker Carlson with a straight face, mind you, feign ignorance over the motivations of the Club Q shooter. So after you for months have been nonstop fear mongering over LGBTQ plus people trying to equate all queer people with groomers and pedophiles, now you're going to feign ignorance and pretend as if you don't know what whipped that lunatic into a frenzy. And he is playing dumb when in the same episode, he did more fear mongering about LGBTQ plus people. As NBC News writer Ben Collins explains, we are one day removed from a shooting at an LGBT club where five people are dead. And Tucker's first segment is him saying the LGBTQ cult is sexualizing children. Weeks ago, he told his viewers to fight back against the LGBTQ community, no matter what the law says. So he has a lot of nerve playing dumb after he effectively told his viewers to break the law. And he thinks that you're stupid enough to not think that he doesn't know exactly what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He knows that his words are helping to incite violence against the queer community. He wants you to think that queer people, all queer people, are groomers and pedophiles, but they're not. Queer people, just like everyone else, are normal human beings that have the capacity to feel hope and pain and happiness and anger. Let's listen to Joshua. This was an individual who was a patron at Club Q on the night of the shooting, and he explains how this affected him personally and his community. This is our only safe space here in the Springs. And so for this to get shot up, like, what are we going to do now? Where are we going to go? Yeah, we can rebuild and, and come together and this, but what about those people that lost their lives for no reason? Like the 18 other 18 that were injured, I could have been one of them. Like it's, it means a lot because again, what are we going to do now? How are we going to feel safe in our, in our city? This was your safe space. Yeah, this was the only LGBTQIA plus space in the entire city of Colorado Springs. It's won awards in independent magazine. It's, I got my start here. Like so many of my friends I met here and people that I call loved ones, and now it's shattered. You can hear the pain in his voice. You can hear how distraught he feels and how hopeless the situation is, because we all know that this is going to continue. The right isn't going to stop demonizing queer people. They know that their words are going to directly lead to violence, and they want this. They're continuing to lie just days after a terrorist attack on the LGBTQ plus community. Take Tim Pool, for example. He responded to Kurt Schlichter, who equated all LGBTQ plus people with pedophiles. And Tim Pool responded saying, we shouldn't tolerate pedophiles grooming kids. Club Q had a grooming event. How do you prevent the violence and stop the grooming? So he's doing two things here. First of all, he's admitting that their rhetoric has catalyzed violence against queer people, but he's also equating any LGBTQ plus space with a grooming event. Because Club Q hosted a drag show, by default, it is a pedophile grooming organization, and maybe they got what was coming to them. I mean, do you understand? They're still lying. Even after their lies caused deaths, they're still lying. Again, queer people are not groomers. They are normal human beings with hopes and dreams. And the victims had names, by the way. Ashley Paw. she was a 35-year-old mother with an 11-year-old daughter, and her husband described her as having a huge heart who helped kids who were in foster care find homes. Now, she wasn't a member of the LGBTQ plus community, but she was an ally, and she went to Club Q to see a comedian perform. She wanted to have a good time, but she was murdered in an act of violence against the queer community. Daniel Aston, he was a 28-year-old trans man who was also a bartender at Club Q, and he moved Moved to Colorado Springs to be closer to his parents. His mother, Sabrina, described him as always smiling, always happy and silly, and now he's gone. 
she will never see that smile again of her son. Derek Rump was a 38-year-old bartender at Club Q, and according to his brother-in-law, he moved to Colorado Springs over 10 years ago to start a new life and live out his dreams. And he had a brother that passed away just a few months earlier, so the pain and heartbreak of his family I mean, it's unimaginable. They must not even know how to process the news that another one of their children is now dead. Kelly Loving, she was a 40-year-old trans woman, and her sister Tiffany describes her as a loving person who always tried to help others out. Her younger friend, Natalie Sky Bingham, describes her as a mother figure who mentored her during her own transition and says that she doesn't know if she'd be around had it not been for Kelly. Now, Kelly was the victim of anti-trans violence before, so this isn't her first brush with violence. But it is going to be her last because she passed away. Now, Bingham, Kelly's friend or daughter, in effect, uh, said that she talked with Kelly before the shooting took place. And Kelly was really proud of the outfit that she had on. So on the night that she died, she felt pretty. She felt beautiful, which was really comforting for Natalie to know about the person who she viewed as her mother. Raymond Green Vance, he was a 22-year-old working at FedEx, and he was trying to save up enough money to get his first apartment. Now, he loved video games, he was very close with his cousins, and he was described as a selfless young adult by his family. He was at Club Q with his girlfriend, Cassandra. They were together since middle school, and her parents and his girlfriend's father, Richard Fierro, ended up stopping the shooter and saving countless lives. Now I want to go to Raymond's girlfriend's father who was there and because of his heroic actions, because he chose to intervene, him and a trans woman heroically saved countless lives. If they hadn't stepped in and stopped the shooter, then who knows how many more people would have been slaughtered. So we're going to look at what he has to say here and he's going to recall the events. This is, again, pretty hard to watch, but let's listen here. I grabbed him by the back of his little cheap ass armor thing and I pulled him down the young man that was that was late he was hiding there had jumped up with me I don't know if he helped pull me to hold him down or not I have no idea okay that guy did the same act I amazing pull the dude down pin him against the side and just started oh I think he went for his pistol I don't know either way I grabbed the pistol from him and then I told the guy move the AR the kid in front of me he was at his head I said, move the AR, get the AR away from him. And the kid did it. And then I started wailing on this dude. And I'm on top of him. I'm a big dude, man, and this guy was bigger. And I, I just kept wailing on him. And I told the kid in front of me, kick him in his head, keep kicking him in his head. I'm yelling 911, somebody call 911. And I'm beating this guy, this guy's trying to wiggle. He's trying to get his, his ammo, his guns. One of the, the performers uh, walked by or was running by and I told her, kick this guy, kick this guy. And she took her high heel and stuffed it in his face or his head or whatever she could hit. I was in mode. I was I was doing what I did I do down range, you know? I train I trained for this. I don't want to ever do this. I I didn't even retire cuz I was just I was done doing this stuff. It was too much. And uh I I'm you know, it came in handy and and I got to protect my my kid. I lost my kid's boyfriend. I tried. I tried to everybody in there. I still feel bad that there's five people. <laughs> There's five people that didn't go home. And this this guy, I told him while I was eating, I said, I'm gonna kill you, man, because you tried to kill my friends. My family was in there. That man is a hero. Without a doubt, he is a hero. And he may not be a member to the LGBTQ plus community, but he knows that queer people are not groomers. He knows that every single life matters, which is why he risked his own life to stop this murderer. But do you want to know what the right is saying about him? They're demonizing this hero as well. Jack Posobiec, for example, wrote this on Truth Social. Are we just not supposed to talk about the U.S. Army major taking his family down to the local drag club for a night out? It's, it's almost shocking to read that tweet aloud. Somebody actually wrote that. Somebody actually wrote that. Someone with a gigantic audience. Rather than calling Richard Fierro a hero, which he is, you're implying that he is a groomer or a pedophile. Their heartlessness knows no bounds and their lies will never stop. 
and people don't believe me when I say this, but you need to listen. They want queer people dead. They're not going to suddenly have a change of heart when they see that their words led to violence. They're going to take that as validation that what they're doing is working and they will continue to do it. They don't care about queer people. They don't think that we are human beings. We are subhuman. We are inferior. And they think that a death of a queer person is not comparable to the death of another person who happens to be cis or straight. They don't view queer people as human beings, which is why they feel no guilt, no remorse whatsoever when this crazy person walks in to a club queue and slaughters them. They're sick. They're genuinely twisted people. And again, the right will never, ever stop. They have no capacity for remorse or guilt. They will continue to call queer people groomers and pedophiles, and nothing is going to stop them from doing that. There's no level of guilt, no amount of bloodshed that will get them to see the light all of a sudden. They are twisted individuals, and they want more violence. And because they know that this works, they're only going to ramp up the rhetoric that equates all queer people with groomers and pedophiles. Now, I don't know what else to say about the situation. It's hard to find the words to express how disgusted I am with the right. But I do want to share uh, something from Brandon Wolf. This is a Pulse nightclub shooting survivor. And I think that he said everything perfectly. Everything that I was feeling, he put it into words much more eloquently than I ever could. So I want to leave you with what he has to say about the situation. Right-wing grifters, including politicians like Ron DeSantis and Greg Abbott, they've been spewing this vile, hateful rhetoric about LGBTQ people. They've been trafficking in some of the oldest, darkest tropes against our community. They've been accusing us of posing a threat to children simply because we exist on planet Earth. And we warned them that inevitably this would result in violence, but they just couldn't help themselves. They couldn't help themselves from crafting one more fundraising email or hitting send on one more grotesque tweet. They couldn't help themselves as the temperature around the country continued to rise, as young people told us that life was getting less and less safe for them. They couldn't help themselves as armed protesters started showing up at drag shows across the country or when white supremacists were being arrested outside of pride festivals. They couldn't help themselves when children's hospitals in Boston and other cities were getting bomb threats, having to install airport security terminals to keep people safe. They couldn't help themselves when a donut shop was firebombed for daring to advertise a drag show. And now five people went to a space that was supposed to be safe for them, a space like the one I knew well at Pulse Nightclub, and they came out in body bags. Dozens of people were injured, scars they're going to carry forever. An entire community was terrorized. They paid the price for this short-sighted, cynical, and sinister hate that these people have been pumping into the ecosystem. I am angry because I am tired of asking, of begging, of screaming and scratching and clawing for people to just see us as human. See us as your yeah. family members, your neighbors, your friends. Please, I am begging you to treat us with a basic level of decency and respect. I'm angry because we deserve to live. Those people deserve to live, Joy. 